Published 0433 S. The 28th of November 2017. Updated 0841 S. The 28th of November 2017. A disorderly Brexit would hit growth and send the pound tumbling further, but banks could handle it, Mark Carney said today. The Bank of England governor gave the assessment as he unveiled results from the latest health check of the financial sector. For the first time all Britain's biggest lenders were passed with no warnings that they need to bolster reserves meaning they can collectively absorb £350 billion of losses over the next few years, but the bank warned it would need to look at whether there was a need to take extra precautions for the unlikely event that there was no deal Brexit at the same time as a severe global recession. Bank of England Governor Mark Carney gave his assessment as he unveiled results from the latest health check of the financial sector today pictured Mr. Carney said a disorderly Brexit would hit growth and the pound but banks could cope with the fallout the assessment comes as Theresa May bids to push Brexit talks on to the topic of trade at a key EU summit next month. But in contrast to Mr Carney, International Trade Secretary Liam Fox insisted today that Britain should not be afraid of leaving with no deal. Governor Mark Carney said the bank's Financial Policy Committee was taking action to ensure the financial system is resilient to a very broad range of risks so that the people of the United Kingdom can move forward with confidence that they can access the financial services they will need to seize the opportunities ahead. Britain should brace for higher unemployment as economic growth weakens due to Brexit uncertainty, an influential think tank warned today. Delivering its latest gloomy assessment, the Organisation for Economic Cooperation and Development OECD said UK growth would fall further over the next two years to 1.2% and 1.1%. After easing to 1.5% for 2017, it could ultimately hit the UK's jobless rate which currently sits at a record low of 4.3%. Economic activity is set to grow at just above 1% in 201,819, with the negative impact of uncertainty about the final outcome of Brexit negotiations being partly countered by an assumed agreement on a transition period after March 2019, said the OECD. However, this pace of growth will not be sufficient to prevent a moderate rise in the unemployment rate. It added that job creation is losing momentum, the OECD's GDP growth forecasts are lower than those issued by the Office for Budget Responsibility OBR Watcog, which currently expects GDP growth of 1.4% in 2018 and 1.3% in 2019. The think tank said the current drop in household spending is likely to continue as the effects of the Brexit hit pound trickle through to consumer prices, though Britons will dip into potential savings in an attempt to keep up spending habits. It also warned over the high level of growth in consumer debt, saying that it posed a major financial stability risk, particularly in light of stagnant wages which continue to be outstripped by the rate of inflation a figure which has jumped to 3%. The bank put seven of the biggest lenders through their paces Lloyds Banking Group, Barclays, RBS, HSBC, Santander, Nationwide Building Society and Standard Chartered. The doomsday scenario drawn up by the bank for the test included a 33% fall in house prices, interest rates surging from 0.5% to 4 per within two years, and the unemployment rate rising to 9.5% from its current rate of 4.3%. Results of the bank's annual test came as it also published its financial stability report, warning that a Brexit transition period of at least 18 to 24 months would be required to help maintain financial stability. Mr. Carney said we have said from the outset that, for financial institutions, a transition period of between 18 to 24 months would be the minimum necessary. The 24-month period remains a good estimate. The governor added that a disorderly Brexit is in nobody's interest. Mr. Carney said he wanted banks, rather than households, to bear the biggest burden of a disorderly Brexit. However, he added that there will be an economic impact on households and business and there will be some pain associated with that. This would come in the form of low growth, a further fall in the value of the pound and higher interest rates. This is about dampening that, he added. In its biannual financial stability report, the bank said it was considering risks for a global recession coinciding with disorderly Brexit. In such circumstances, capital buffers would be drawn down substantially more than in a stress test and, as a result, banks would be more likely to restrict lending to the real economy, it said. The bank's report stated that, to preserve the continuity of existing cross-border insurance and derivatives contracts, UK and EU legislation would be required. 6 million UK policyholders, 30 million European Economic Area EEA policyholders, and around £26 trillion of outstanding uncleared derivatives contracts could otherwise be affected.
The Treasury is considering all options for mitigating risks to the continuity of outstanding cross-border financial services contracts, the report said. The assessment comes as Theresa May bids to push Brexit talks onto the topic of trade at a key EU summit next month.